Hey y'all, it's Sarah. I wanted to talk to you guys about some signs. I've got several sitting here. These are um, just some plain, simple worded signs. This is something that I love. It's not for everybody, but I like the look of this. I am a big fan of labels and label makers and things like that. So this art is really kind of right in my wheelhouse. I wanted to share with you while I was working on a few projects, if this is your thing too, um, some easy ideas to knock these out without needing any kind of um, electronic cutting machine, a Cricut, a Silhouette, any of those things. So I want to go ahead and jump into it. Really quick though, I want to show you um, kind of what got me started here. So these are mine. These are all ones that I have made already. And I want to show you... Um, this one, which is actual wood. You can hear that. And I wanted to show you my knockoff version. So I just wanted to show you what you're capable of. Just with the, the few things that I'm throwing out here. I'm probably, when it's all said and done, going to end up using two full sheets of white foam core. And of course my stickers. And here is some of what I'm using. So Dollar Tree has these options, these um, poster stickers. These are a really nice option. They're a good size. I happen to like this particular font. Um, and you can kind of see that here. They have these options, which are rub-ons. That means you kind of cut these out, stick them down, and scratch them onto your surface um, with a popsicle stick. Dollar Tree now is bringing in a lot more sticker options and some of the ones that they are bringing in may not be kind of your farmhouse colors. Um, they're a little more colorful, but there's some really great fonts. And I wanted to show you kind of a couple ideas and I'm going to show you how I achieved this. And these are just regular stickers. These are some scrapbook stickers that I've had probably a good 10 years, if not more. Some of you scrapbookers might recognize this old k and Company pack of stickers. So, obviously, these colors were not for me. And you can see that over the years, out of three sheets, I didn't use very many. So, I wanted to use these. I ended up using these to get my knockoff sign. I'm going to show you how to get... Um, whatever color you want out of these in this process, even though the stickers I'll be using for this project won't need it. But I will show you how to do that and how I got this look. So let me tell you one more thing we're going to be using. If you hadn't figured it out by now, you guys should know me. I'm going to be using some Ready Board brand foam core. This is something you find right next to your poster boards in your same areas like office supplies, school supplies, in lots of your major retailers, Dollar Tree, Walmart, um, Dollar General, all of those places. It's usually a dollar or less a sheet. It's a 20 by 30 sheet. And just a side note, this video is being sponsored by Ready Board. So I'm going to jump in. I'm really excited about these. I really do love this look. If it's not for you, this video is probably going to be a waste other than maybe learning a couple techniques with the stickers. So I'm going to slide this whole piece back out of the way so we can dive in. So I'm ready to dive right in. I want to show you my foam core that I've got or my little scrap of a piece, as you can see, is six inches by 22 and a half inches. Guys, I don't know why it's that length. It just happened to be, um, this piece happened to be cut out. It seemed like a good size. So you do the measurements that's going to work for your letter. Some of my other ones are only 15 um, inches wide. I did stick around that six inch mark as far as height on mine, um, or in the case of the bakery one, width. So I wanted you to see, this is the back of my transfer paper. Um, it's the same thing as just wax paper out of your kitchen. This is what I laid my letters out on in order to be able to kind of make sure that I was hitting a size um, that I really wanted to fit this entire word across. It took me a couple sheets to get all the signs that I wanted to get done done. On my framing, I'm using, because I have these pieces already, I am using two of the three quarter inch width by 30 inch strips. 
to cut down to make my frame. If you guys are new and you're not sure what this is, this is actually foam core also. Mine is painted in a faux wood color. Um, this kind of leans towards the, the barn wood look that um, I have that video in the playlist that you can check out. There's several other colors. I don't do the paint tutorials for this in any of my crafts simply because I want to be able to devote a lot more detail in the painting part. So check those out so you can apply it to this craft in particular. So my pieces, I've done the sides. That way um, I can pretty much go straight into framing it out and then I'll just have to do whatever raw edges are for my cuts. So I came in I'm going to show you a couple of cheats on doing my letters. Now, these are ju just the Dollar Tree letters, and I use the black ones for this. I like this size. It's a good size. It ends up with a, a nice size sign, but I wanted to show you how I got nice coverage on these letters here. So, what I ended up doing is, let me find a letter that I feel like I want to go ahead and paint up. Any of them, honestly, I'm going to end up probably turning all of these black. So the colors you're going to see me use for this right here, I'm using the Waverly Chalk Paint and in Ink. And they're really nice black color. And just one of the Dollar Tree kitchen sponges that I have cut down. The reason I prefer this method over a paintbrush is when you go to use a paintbrush, you're scooping up paint typically, you're dipping into paint and you've got quite a lot of saturation to that brush. So the first place you hit on this letter is gonna really get saturated. Um, then you get brush strokes, blobby spots, and unless you're wanting those looks, go ahead and do it that way. But I did wanna show this option. Um, being a scrapbooker, I've done this many times because I did end up with stickers like this that I liked the font of but they didn't match so I'm going in just like this there is barely any paint on here that way I'm getting good coverage but I'm not getting goopy coverage if that makes sense so it ends up giving you a nice clean coverage you're less likely to push a lot of your paint down into um, the cut areas of your stickers you can see that's got a nice color to it those are the ones that i used on my duplicate for the farmer's market so i'm going to show you the technique that i use to paint on those though so i'm going to bring these down this is where the white chalk paint comes in let's talk about how i got these just stickery letters to look like a little something more um, you could easily just dry brush over this and that simply means dipping a dry paintbrush and brushing it across. Um, this is pretty similar to that. You can tell there's a few differences. This is mine and this is the store-bought wood version. I don't know if you guys can hear that. So I want to show you an idea to use this kind of method on just the Dollar Tree poster letters. I've got some of my white chalk paint out and you guys may recognize Dollar Tree has these style paint brushes. They're really almost awful in such a wonderful way. So the bristles already are pretty rough. This one I let my kids use. It got dry. It's kind of crunchy. That's what I want. I want it to drag those marks across even more exaggerated than what you get from a simple dry brush. The other thing that I've got sitting here with me is just a post-it note. So that is how you get these kind of straighter marks and you don't even have to add those you could just go across and do that but I did like that little bit um, that it added so I am just going to take this post-it note stick it right there and I'm gonna take this wonderfully awful brush and dip it in just some white chalk paint here I tap a little bit of it off. I don't want to go too heavy. The really great thing about having this on this wax paper is this should make this task so much easier. So I'm just going to hit right along there. I went a little crazy with that. I'm not sure how well this is going to show up on the camera. 
detail wise, but I kind of want you to get the idea. So let me see if I can hit across several letters at once. And I'm going to go across all those letters at once. I'm not even reloading my brush. I'm hoping that those bristles drag that paint kind of individually. Kind of speckly. I want a few chunks of paint. Don't worry if you go too overboard. You can always go back in with black and fix it or whatever color um, you need to fix it. So I'm going to do a couple of these straight line things. And then I'm just going to go in... And you can go brush strokes, you can go tap strokes, you can stroke from your paper outwards. If you can see kind of those straight lines that it's leaving behind. So at this point, I'm just going to come in. Now I've got this thing really kind of painty. I'm making those bristles even worse. Make sure that I've got more than one loaded. Just going to come in. Some places I'm dragging. Some places I'm just dropping it. You can come from different directions. You could do this once you laid your letters down. If you decided that they were just a little too plain. And I did some of mine plain. Um, I was pretty happy with just the plain look on this. So, you choose to go as heavy or as light. The reason I like this little bristly brush is it almost gives, because they're so spread out and sparse and wiry, it almost gives that paint splatter effect. And I'm teaching you guys these things, these ideas, not so much as a painter, because that I'm, I'm actually not. Um, a lot of this comes from scrapbookers, things that we have done over the years to improvise stickers before um, Cricut became as mainstream. This was just things that we come up with, things that we did. So I come to you with those ideas and kind of blending them. So as you can see, now there is really a lot of detail to that beyond just dry brushing that. So this doesn't take very long at all to draw. The chalk paint doesn't. We didn't put that much. I'm going to move the real one, the fake one. And you can see I, this is the reason why I didn't actually do this as a video. I painstakingly sat individually and tried to mimic the original almost to a T. So that's why I didn't use this one as my example. I didn't think you guys wanted to watch that level of paint dry. So I'm going to pull this over here and kind of get an idea. These letters, I believe, are one and three quarters tall. And yes. I've got a six inch piece. Let me scoot that up for you guys. I've got a six inch piece. I want to try to make sure that um, somewhere in this that my letters are pretty much centered as well as I can. So it's going to give me just under two inches top and bottom maybe. One of the things you want to keep in mind, now I'm only using the three quarter inch strips. I did that on some and then I used one inch on others. It just depended on which strips that I already had cut down. But keep that in mind when you're centering, you know, being able to have kind of a, a frame of um, open space around your letter. Something to frame it out fairly evenly. Negative space, if you want to call it that. But just something that allows you to kind of frame those words in. So keep that in mind when you're doing your measurements. And you really could customize it any which way you want. So I could make this really complicated and we could do miters. And I've done miters pretty much in every video. But I'm going to 
show you guys how to make this super, super easy. Now, a couple of mine, I did do miters, but um, I'm just going to do, I don't know what this is called, but I think of it as a kind of a butt joint frame. So in order to do this, you're just going to need your width and part of your length. I've got my framing pieces laid out, set, ready to go. I'm not putting them down yet because I feel like it's much easier for me to get my letters applied when my surface is still flat. So I said mine were going to come up about two inches. I think roughly that's where I'm going with mine. Like I said, depending on your project, just center it kind of where it's going to work for you. The other direction that I want to kind of center this is to make sure that I've got um, pretty close to the same amount of space on this end and this end. And it gives me about two and a quarter. I want to mark that. And I want to mark my bottom also. And I'm going to show you if you're having trouble marking on this and erasing it, especially when you're wanting to keep this piece white. Um, I'm going to show you a really easy um, tool to help get that. Let's see. So I've got my bottom marked out. I've got at least one side marked out. The rest of this should end up down here. But in case I was worried about that, I could go ahead and mark it. And I'm pretty sure that's close to where they're going to align. So I wanted to show you a couple cheating tricks. One is if you want to align letters, take a ruler grab your letter. I'm not going to use these because I've got them lined up the way that they're going to work out for me now, but you're just going to take your sticker, use the lines on your ruler, get your word lined up across here, bring it over to your page, line it up there and stick it down. Then you just kind of fold your ruler right back out and you're good to go. This is because we're not doing Cricut style and using transfer paper. We've got to find other cheater ways. So one thing I've done here is that I've got the wax paper, which means these are going to um, peel off of this really easily. I am doing basically the same thing. I'm just tearing down through my wax paper and only taking half the back. So the other half still is attached to my lettering and hopefully I'll keep all of my letters in place. There we go. Usually I do that with scissors. So now you can see I have that top sticky portion exposed. This is if you're really, really having the struggle to get your letters aligned. So I've got my line is under my paper because my paper is a little long. All I need to do is just put my ruler up there. There we go. I've got my letters aligned. I've got the side aligned. All the edges aligned. I want to make sure. Just pop my ruler up there now that it's laying down. Everything is about as straight as I'm going to get it without using something like transfer tape and having machines that do it for you. So as you can see, I'm able to get that pretty straight. I'm going to go in and start pushing those down. Typically, I like to use a popsicle stick. It's very flexible. It doesn't dent my foam core. It's not going to dent my letters in. So I will go in, rub them all down. So now all I've got to do is just kind of do the same thing. Whoops. I pulled a little excitedly on that one. And peel my wax paper off this underside. And you can kind of see all my letters just stay where I planted them. Same thing with the ruler. It's just I already had these laid out on the wax paper because it helped me see how long this word was going to end up being. I could have done the math, measured each letter, added those together, but this was just simpler. 
There we go. Popsicle stick. Get everybody nice and flat. Now, when I was discussing erasing your pencil line, this is a Dollar Tree um, art eraser. And typically, it is used to help remove adhesives. But one of the other great things about it is, especially with foam core um, and this paper surface foam core that is so susceptible to smudges and fingerprints and pencil marks and even smudges from erasers. Um, my nail polish has transferred off on it before, like a crayon. This allows you to get a lot of those off when you're doing it on white, especially if you're wanting to use white in this way. You can see how nice and clean. There's no discoloration like you could normally get from a pencil eraser, especially one that's already had um, erased with it a few times. So that part's done. I've got my two cut pieces. I'm going to go full length on the top, and then I'm just going to need pieces to fit here. You could stop right here, really, if you wanted to, but I'm going to go ahead and finish this out. So when I said I had a couple pieces, when you cut down, because I cut all of mine in 30-inch lengths, when I cut it down, there was still some left. I want to get the measurement to squeeze it right in between here and just butt these up. So I'm going to mark that off really quick and cut these down. I knew I didn't have a whole lot of scrap left over. And you guys know that I will use scraps in anything when I can. So I'm just going to cut both of those down. So now that those short pieces are cut to kind of wedge up in there, I'm just going to take my hot glue. I've already hot glued those two down. It just makes it easier when doing this style to me um, and when I'm doing a miter I find it easier to do the other direction so I'm just gonna pop that down in there I got it cut pretty snug I think it adds to um, going this route keeping it rustic definitely adds to the kind of um, genre of the sign itself and it makes it so simple with two sheets you could really just knock out several. So my very last step on this, where this white edge shows, would be to come in with my same paint um, that I originally painted my framing with. And like I said, that's its own tutorial. But I would just take that, got just my Dollar Tree sponge. I wanna come in, do that edge just like that, run a good coat of paint so that your edges look more finished like it's one solid piece these are so so light um that all you've got to use this is the dollar tree version of just some poster tack i've been asked before what it is it's just like sticky putty like teachers used to use to put um instructional aids on the walls when we were in school that's basically all it is you pull it out you ball it up you stick it to the back now i will say if you have anything other than flat wall paint, these are okay. This blue one from Dollar Tree. If you have flat wall paint, which I do in certain areas, I have really light color flat wall paint. The blue does stain it. So I typically, for other walls, get the Scott brand um, that's white and um, use that. However, for things like my doors, I can get away with using this blue one. So whatever works for you. That way you kind of know, because I know I've been asked often now what I'm talking about with the poster putty. You still could always use command strips. I feel like these are almost a waste of command strips, given how entirely light they really are. Um, one last thing before I uh, get to work on my next little crafty obsession of the night. Um, I wanted to give you a few more kind of word options here. If you didn't have, um, if you hadn't thought of any that you might like. So here's a quick viewpoint of all the ones I've kind of thrown together this evening. You've got bakery, vintage, farmer's market, which is a given, um, antiques, apothecary, um, farmhouse, maybe one, a smaller one that just says eggs, fresh eggs, um, 
farm fresh just all of those things keep those in mind of course you've got your regular things like gather and um the traditional gathered blessed faith those kind of things but i wanted to throw a few other words out for you these are likely not all of these that i will be doing but like i said i wanted these to quickly throw in a spot that maybe i haven't settled on something to go there and i just need something light easy and a filler piece these are all a nice size i kept pretty much with the six inches i had a lot of strips that size all i had to do is cut down um to my wording but the six inches seem to be really good even with my um even with my taller font once again i want you guys to see these are the fake ones these are my faked out ones and then here is a real one this one is certainly more real than mine are but it's a really fun way to do it there's a lot of options getting out of your lettering look at the font not at the color that's really hard to do sometimes because you look and you think what am i ever going to use neon orange letters on but keep in mind that you can totally paint them works out you can add to them i could have put more paint over these sanded them down um, a little bit and really quick if i did not mention if you end up with so much paint on your sticker letters that they won't stick if you want a good adhesion with the foam core, this is what I suggest. Just a stick glue. It is low moisture. Um, it's quick adhesion so that you can get it stuck back down. You're not worrying about any damage, bubbling, or peeling of using a wet glue um, or a lot of seepage outside of your letters that you have to clean up later. So I hope some of those tips and tricks help. I, this is kind of dedicated to it. A, a, um, a good friend that I've made recently, and, and she's a very new crafter and really diving in. And sometimes people appreciate the ideas, of even the smallest details of, hey, this is something to think of while you're crafting this small little detail. So thanks to her for reminding me that every little detail counts. I hope you guys get a chance to do a little crafting and I'll talk to y'all soon.